Let's try to understand abstraction in object-oriented programming. Abstraction is an important concept in object-oriented uh, programming. And we are going to examine what is abstraction in terms of real-world examples, as well as we are trying to understand how abstraction does matter when it comes to object-oriented programming. Let's start with a real-world example. We have a telephone here. In order to use a telephone, I need to be aware of certain parts in the telephone. One is there is a dial pad where I can uh, key in the number. And there is a mouthpiece as well as an earpiece where I can uh, listen to as well as uh, I can say something, a hi, hello to the mouthpiece. So that's the way a telephone is giving us one abstraction. But essentially if you are looking at a telephone, these three are not the one, two and three. If you are looking at any real life telephone, you can understand that it is not just the dial pad, mouthpiece, earpiece and these three components that the actual telephone is containing. It is much more complicated in internally. Just like it has got a circuit board, speaker, capacitors, integrated circuit again and uh, microphone, all those things are there. But in order to use the telephone, we just don't have to bother about all of these things. We just don't have to understand what network switching system the telephone uh, uh, exchange is use, using. Or even with the equipment, we just don't have to worry about the circuit board, indicated circuit, and we don't need to be an electronics expert to use a telephone. This is an example from the real, real life. So, what makes this possible is abstraction. Because the telephone is an equipment which has got abstractions like dial pad, mouthpiece, earpiece, so that we don't have to worry about the internal details just to use that. Any naive user can just pitch in and uh, they can start calling somebody through a telephone equipment. This is another diagram which is showing how different persons, different users are having the different abstraction about the same object. When it comes to a user here, for her the telephone is just a dial pad, mouthpiece and an ear, earpiece. So she does not uh, bother about the internal details. Even though she knows that it is much complicated internally, she does not really have to bother about that. But when it comes to this guy, the technician, he just need to be aware of the internal details of it a bit, that there is a microphone. If the microphone is the thing that is uh, damaged, he can opt for a replacement for that microphone. And he just need to understand IC integrated circuits over there. And in case if uh, an integrated circuit needs some repairing, he needs to do that repairing part, portion. So when it comes to a technician's view, uh, the telephone is much more complicated than this user. For the user it is very simple equipment but at the technician the same equipment is much more complicated and he is able to tackle that complexity as well because he is trained for that. So I, I will say that these two people have different abstractions about the same object. And when it, when it comes to a molecular scientist for example, this is a very hypothetical situation. That's not really going to happen. She can she can just say that, hey, you are using integrated circuits which are very, um, very new and there are advances in molecular chem chemistry so that you can use a better conducting IC circuit. But when it comes to this atomic scientist, the same telephone, the same telephone becomes a bunch of atoms and he sees interactions with between electrons, protons and neutrons over there. But this abstraction is useless because it's not helpful for managing or uh, it's not really helpful for uh, repairing the telephone or any practical purpose. So because of that reason, we have to choose a right level of abstraction. For the user, she has 
chosen the right level of abstraction that she is aware of only the essential portions. She does not know about the internal details. For the technician, she, he knows about the internal details a bit and he can to perform his job better. Even the molecular scientist is able to uh, suggest something that you can, you, can, uh, you can make the telephone a better thing. So it is essential that we have to choose the right level of abstraction when we are programming or when we are observing thing in, things in real world. I'll just go to an example. If I have a sorter class here, I can see a method, probably like uh, sort, and it can be receiving an integer array of uh, numbers. And this is a public method. And this public method is what the user sees about a user if he's uh, looking from here. He, if he's looking from outside about the class, he can only see the public method called sort. And he can pass an array of uh, integers here. And what he get is uh, uh, maybe it will be returning a value, integer array again. So uh, the agreement is like that the class sorter will sort anything that is an integer array and return an integer array which will be sorted of course but in order to do that sorting portion he might be relying on so many private methods sort first sort second etc and there can be a very complicated mechanism that's going on inside. But when it comes to the user who is looking from outside, these things, all these things are not seen, not visible to him, and he's not bothered about that. For him, what matters is this thing, the sort method, and he just can pass an integer array it will get sorted somehow. He's not bothered about the internal, internally which algorithm is being used for the sorting purpose and he gets the array back. What you can see here is abstraction in action. The user has a proper level of abstraction. The creator of the sorter class has given uh, a proper abstraction by only exposing this sort method and he has chosen to make these methods private maybe 100 methods can be there all met all those methods are private right now and uh, uh, abstraction you can see abstraction in that way in a, in a sort of class as well as also there is encapsulation things are capsuled encapsulated here that is the reason why a person who is looking at the class is not able to see the private methods he can only see the public methods which are exposed outside. That's pretty much uh, the explanation for abstraction. Thank you.